All right, everyone. Welcome back to another Coyote Radio Show and podcast. We got a great guest today, Ramblin' Ricky Tate's with us. I'm new to his music. He sent me a message saying, hey, man, check out my stuff um, a few months back. And I was hooked. And he sent a song called Catch Some Hell. The music video out. You can YouTube it. Check it out. Great song. Cool music video, too. Um, then I started going down the rabbit hole on some of his stuff that's out there on Spotify. So great, great artist, talented. Uh, brings a lot of old school vibes back, you know, jug band stuff and folk music and uh, stuff you just really love. Good country blues rooted mu- musician, I'll say that. Uh, so we're going to talk to him, get his story, how he got started in music and uh, where you can find him at this summer on tour. And um, but first, I do got to say thanks to everyone. The podcast is growing. Show's getting better. Um, as you can see visually, uh, it's a newer camera. The mic system's better. So I'm trying here. I'm trying to give some good content. You know, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun doing it, and I appreciate all the support. Check us out at uh, our website, Coyote Radio Show and Podcast.com. I'm also on social media as far as Facebook and Instagram. Um, I don't tweet or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a TikTok or none of that crap. Uh, even though it says online that you probably should if you're trying to promote something like this and grow your channel but man i just i'm out of time i got too much shit going on so for now this is what i'm doing um yeah let's go talk to rambling ricky tate and get his story and uh we'll catch you later all right rambling ricky tate thanks for joining us man yeah thanks for having me um i'm new to your music and i'm a fan (laughs) <laughs> Word, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of, you know, for the first time guest on the show, we normally start at the beginning, you know, your upbringing, how you got into music and kind of how you, where you, you know, what you've been through to get to where you are now and, and what your future plans are as far as music, music's concerned. So if you would take us on that journey. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long one. Um, uh, yeah, I started, uh, started playing tunes way back in like the 90s when I was a kid. Uh, I started out as a drummer, played in like a bunch of punk and metal projects. The first song I ever recorded was like, you know, punk rock song, teenage angst and all that uh, fun stuff. <laughs> uh, my dad played music. <laughs> yeah, you know how it, you know how it goes. <laughs> um, my dad played music, so I got into it a lot through him. Like, you know, he was always in bands and stuff like that, like grunge bands and 80s metal, all that kind of like really extravagant rock and roll stuff. So they had the drums and guitars and all that stuff. So kind of got access to the instruments at an early age. Uh, I did that all the way through like high school. Um, I played like a little bit of guitar, but mostly drums. You know, I wrote some punk songs and stuff. I had a punk band on guitar and all that. But um, I really, I didn't start doing acoustic music until I started traveling around. Like um, uh, can't travel with a big drum kit. Obviously all my friends, you know, they were like doing the, hard up traveling kid lifestyle and like playing on the streets and all that stuff and uh so at first i transitioned to having like a little peanut can and i would play percussion with like a brush like a jazz stick you know like a brush drumstick so i would play that and um eventually it was actually uh, i was in nashville back when abby the spoon lady was down there all the time she was one of the first people that gave me a bunch of thimbles and said i should try doing washboard and i it was all it was like a duh why didn't i think of that you know <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so i started doing the washboard the washboard's kind of like a the slope it was like a gateway into like old time and rag time and all that stuff that like kids in new orleans were playing at that point in time like um it was over a decade ago now it's like most like mostly old timey like punk kids playing old timey stuff down in new orleans and when i started playing the washboard we kind of started getting adjacent to that and we started like learning about bands and different musicians meeting people in that kind of whole scene and everything and uh that's kind of like what what started it all um kind of out of necessity i was out there traveling on the streets and i was hungry like i was i remember like being in new york city as like a younger you know like real young adult type you know like didn't know what the hell was going on yet and I was hungry. I didn't know what to do. And the band already had all the beer, so they didn't want to go play. So I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't just go play this washboard. So that's kind of like, it's all this slippery slope of like slowly learning how to play old jug band tunes. Like I was playing a lot of uh, Stealing, like On the Road Again, Casey Moan, all these songs. 
kept bringing me back to the Memphis Jug Band. So I got into a lot of old Jug Band tunes, like um, the kids that I was really listening to a lot back then was Drunken Catfish Ramblers. I don't know if you remember them. Yeah. Um, yeah, he played like one of the dudes. He plays in like Tupa Skinny now. They play like jazz and stuff. But they were they were doing a rowdy Jug Band stuff back then, doing that Catfish Rambler thing. And they were a really big influence of like just me trying to do like that particular style, like real janky New Orleans like ragged stuff <laughs> yeah it, it, you can hear it in your music for sure or yeah, yeah it's, it's, uh, that's my favorite stuff so you started running around uh what just busking in different cities or yeah new, uh, new york new new orleans nashville you're in yeah, alabama kind of, now right yeah i'm in alabama right now right right now alabama i've been planted uh the pandemic kind of changed my touring thing like uh I'm in the band Steel City Jug Slammers. We were touring full time through the pan like before. We were all over the place, and then once the pandemic hit, we kind of haven't really been on the road since then. So I've been building up doing local things solo, just yeah, uh, a couple of states away, if anything, you know. But mostly just around the state of Alabama. But like, yeah, I kind of started out traveling around. Um, me and my buddy Danny Hammonds, he plays folk music too. Um, yeah, he he was always just like, "Yo, let's go," and I was like what do I have to do? Let's ride. So we'd go to like Memphis and St. Louis. We would go like all up and around. We'd go to Mississippi, like wherever, just close little road trips. And we always played music on the streets and all that. And uh, eventually he started booking like more realistic tours and we started getting further and further up. I started doing touring and eventually like I was playing in a band called Main Section Mayhem back then. And we were like real dirty, like folk punk, like really just dirty kid stuff. And we were going crazy. We were just kind of like, we're almost like the fleas attached to his tour sometimes like he would have a show and we wouldn't we'd show up and play anyways and just be there so a lot of the times we were just kind of following him around but um it all just like it's a snowball effect you know you you get some gigs some busking and then eventually you have more gigs than you know and eventually you're not even playing on the street anymore so it's kind of like one of those things we went all over the place uh especially in the jug slammers we toured everywhere um we played all up and down the West coast. We got robbed over there, lost all our stuff. Uh, we toured <laughs> the East coast extensively. And then uh, we got to go to Canada. That was fun. I did. I'd never done that before. So that was like a best item getting out of the country. <laughs> yeah, man. That's awesome. That's a lot. You've experienced quite a bit and there's a lot to say with that kind of culture, as far as being rooted with country music, folk music. Mm -hmm. That's where oh, I yeah. think, Honestly, I mean, everyone's got their own taste and style. You talk to one guy who love like red dirt country stuff from Texas, or mm -hmm. I'm more like mountain Appalachia style. But a lot of this busking stuff, roots, um, jug band stuff. I mean, that's about as real as you can get as far as being real country blues music. Like, yeah, it's like kind of that early form of it. Some of the earliest people to record the styles, you know. And I yeah. like that, like going to find that source recording. It's all scratchy and deciphering what they're saying. Cause like at that point in time, you look, you could go listen to it on the internet, sure. But like there wasn't a lot of like, there's just lyrics available for the song. So we'd sit there and decipher it and just like, yeah, what is this guy saying? It's crazy. Yeah. It's a real what old tune. <laughs> yeah. What word was that? I'm just going to go, la, la, la. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds similar. So just go with it. Yeah, I like to see that, though, like the different influences, because it all kind of eventually boiled down into like rock and roll, R&B, country. But it all started out in like very similar styles, but just regionally with like different little twangs to it here and there. New Orleans or like you were saying, like Texas styles or you had like in the jug band stuff, particularly you had like the Memphis style was like raw country harmonica banjos and stuff but then you had the louisville style was like all horns like more of an urban city sound so it's like even within just one genre it's kind of wild like how many right. different styles you hear that regional thing you know yeah you definitely you can feel the regional parts mm -hmm. um so you um your newest i guess your latest uh release uh catch some hell is that your latest one uh, yeah, that's my almost latest. I, I did one about a month ago called Disconnected, too. So that was like a live session. Oh, um, catch, I haven't even catch heard that one yet. It's out there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll shoot it over to you. Um, it's just it's a live song. It's not quite as uh, not quite as elaborate as the Catch Some Hell video. It's just like a live session that we kind of did. Um, 
just to get the song kind of done and out there. But uh, Catch Some L is the last one that I really like put a lot of effort into like a, a nice video for, which that was really fun to do. So, yeah, definitely one of my favorite ones. <laughs> yeah. Whoever you're working with on that, that they did a good job at editing. I don't know if you did it yourself or had a buddy. Or oh, no, I, I, I'm, I don't know how to do that. I mean, I can do some like simple stuff, nothing fancy like that. that's my buddy Jordan. He does all of my videos. Um, he's listed on like my YouTube. I, he's credited on all of it on my YouTube and all that stuff. Um, he's always looking for work. <laughs> yeah. So, job. Yeah. He uh, really does kill it. Like uh, I was actually, like I said earlier, we were out filming with, I was out filming with him today down at the river. We're running around filming a, a new song of mine that, uh, that hasn't come out yet, but like, yeah, he's a trooper. He's down here with this real nice camera, awfully close to that creek water. So I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't better hope he's got insurance. You don't want to drop that sucker in the water. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I hope I'm not responsible for that. <laughs> yeah. So uh are you working on a full album to release here soon? Or are you just dropping like singles at a time? Or like what's your game plan with that? I'm kind of subconsciously working on the album. Um I think I've got all the songs ready for it, um, but I don't so like I'd like it to kind of be cohesive instead of just throwing all the songs I already have together. So I think I'm going to go in and re-record a lot of the singles that I've released, like Catch Some Hell and some of the other ones. And uh, I'm going to probably try to re-record them, maybe slightly different instrumentations, maybe the same. I want to re-record them all like in one session so they kind of stay with that same style and sound and everything and then right. uh, a couple of extra ones that aren't out yet so it just you know something that's new that you haven't heard yet but some of the same ones just so they have like a an album to call home basically and that'll be my first album i guess i don't really have a solo album yet right yeah that's what i was looking at and seeing um mm -hmm. then you are you going to tour behind that when yeah hopefully released, or yeah like i'm i'm working on a small tour right now um like uh, i was talking about my buddy danny earlier me and him are talking about it um it's i think it's in the works for like september or october that we're going to go on a small tour that'll be my first official solo tour and then after that i'll be working on that album and then i'll try to probably do like a real tour after that to support the album and hopefully go all over the place with it if they'll let me <laughs> yeah that's great yeah I'll, I'll be there to support it man hopefully you can uh, make it up to i'm in indiana so if you ever come through here hit me up yes I'll hopefully you know anytime it's been it's been a while but hopefully we'll, i'll be coming back up that way so yeah um uh, tell me about the song you guys recorded now i'm curious about what the song you worked on today as far as music video wise what um yeah any so the one, secret details we can find <laughs> it's all top secret yeah i can't <laughs> tell you any any details about it it's all a big conspiracy right now no one knows if it even happened. <laughs> and also, like, uh, today's one that's kind of a little bit out of my uh, comfort zone, so to speak. I usually do everything 100% myself other than, like, filming the videos. Like, I come up with the idea I want for the video. I tell him, and he kind of, like, executes it with me, and we make it happen. And he's, he's to blame for the videos. But music-wise, it's all just me. Um, this will be the first one I've ever actually done collaborating with somebody. So uh, there'll be more details on that soon and everything, but I've actually I've collaborated with the dude that he does like um, kind of like po more poems and uh, spoken word stuff. But uh, he always wanted to, to do a song and like can kind of thinks about songwriting and everything, but he doesn't sing or anything. So I actually collaborated with him and I did all the music to it, fixed around like some of the cadences of the words and made it fit my style. So me and him actually have done a collaboration on it. So it's uh first time I've ever done anything like that, really. But uh. If it fits my theme, I think I I chose chose a poem that he had already done, and uh, like uh, I've already got kind of like the rivers and uh, all that down trotting, you know, low down country bluesman stuff going on. Anyways, I chose a poem of his that kind of reflects that. So it's like a it's a sad one kind of, but it's kind of up, upbeat and uh, like uh, it's like I said, it's really outside of my comfort zone. I don't know what to think about uh letting somebody else kind of come into my creative bubble but uh i think it's gonna end up being a good thing hopefully we'll see how it goes <laughs> yeah that sounds interesting i always you know that's funny you mentioned that the spoken word thing and i obviously i'm doing this podcast i just love music all different types and uh, i can't sing a lick 
So I always thought about, well, what if I did, you know, like some of that old country stuff, they would just talk through a course, yeah, like a talking or, or a spoken word thing or mm -hmm. I, so that way I can at least get some creative outlet for myself <laughs> more for therapy, I guess, than anything. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it'd be fun. You yeah, should. Uh, to that. Yeah, probably, you might end up coming up with some lyrics to something for one of your favorite singers or something. They decide, hey, there's the hook to my new song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then yeah, you make yeah. that Hollywood money. Yeah, I'm far from that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll keep dreaming. <laughs> yeah, let's get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like uh, go ahead. I would definitely for sure. I I would I would recommend it for sure. I wish I did more stuff like that myself. Like I think I write a lot of songs and everything, but yeah, I think I I need to push my boundaries and do some some spoken word, or something or like a talking blues. Like a I would go straight on this like. Hello, darling. <laughs> like, let's go. <laughs> Some Conway Twitty on there. I'll get it. Yeah, let's. I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, man, it's a, a common theme that happens on the show, and it's a lot of how I just probably just what I grew up on and what I was into, um, music wise. But it, I'm always gravitating towards uh, stuff like that you're pitting out and numerous other things but the, the there's always this common denominator of all everyone's coming from like a punk or a metal background in music and somehow we all end up in the bluegrass folk world <laughs> it's like yeah the transition it's, a, it's, it's like all right we're out of our teen years we were kind of growing up a little bit mm -hmm. but we still got something to say sort of thing <laughs> yeah it's, it's real similar and like i get it with like especially with bluegrass and punk rock like the beat of it like not that there's a beat in most bluegrass but if there was it would be a punk rock beat you know like you could you could take a d beat in a bluegrass song and mash it right up and it would work you know and it's like uh i think that's kind of like we're we're on that rhythm already so it's easy to transition to and i feel like it's one of those things too like your palate with taste changes i think your ears do the same thing to like you don't want as crunchy of stuff and then you start hearing this real smooth like a lot of old country has that real good plate reverb on it and you hear that reverb oh, and you're yeah. like that's like the that's the distortion i want to hear now you know like i don't want to hear metal guitars which like back in the day it was all about tone you want to hear this who's got the best tone and i was like who's got that 90 foot long plate reverb on there stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's always interesting i had cooper yeah. on from the devil makes three and he was like yeah, man, bluegrass, that's kind of like the start of punk music. You know, back then, you know, punk rock was built in house shows and stuff, you know, neighborhoods, people just throwing house parties. And it's like, well, bluegrass started like that too, you know, like, hey, we don't have much money. We're not, there's no venue. I'll come over to my house on Friday yeah. night. We'll have a picking session. That was so like most years, punk rock you could get, you know, it back is. then. So years crazy how it's like. Yeah, exactly. It's it really is the exact same thing. It's like years before bluegrass and years before any of that was going on. Before they figured out what it was going to be called, my grandmother. That's how she learned how to dance. Her dad was a banjo picker and a moonshiner, and uh, she had no idea what any of that stuff was. She's just like, yeah, that's just what they do up there in the hills. And uh, there was like a real normal, like Christian regular upbringing. Other than that, they ate cornbread, but on the weekends they would take every item of furniture out of their house. Because they all yeah. slept in one room. They'd take every item of furniture out of the house and have a massive dance. And they'd play old-time music and fiddles and all that stuff. And she, she said she had her first dance with her dad while he was likely drunk on moonshine. You know, <laughs> doing, doing the banjo thing. Tore everything out of the whole house. Like, that sounds like a punk show to me. Like, just throw the couch in the lawn and all the mohawks bouncing around and everything. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. play that with a bunch of crooked hats like mine. You know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. It sounds yeah. sounds like punk rock. <laughs> Man, I wish we had some of that around here. Some of those old school house parties were there. Know, couches yeah. out. Someone needs to start that trend back in, in this area, anyway. I'm sure they're yeah. out there. I'm they're from, just, uh, not quite the same, but yeah, it's not. It's not as similar as it was back then. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, and it's like the the only spot in Alabama that really seems to be like particularly how it is like everywhere in Alabama is like, Oh, that makes sense. It's Alabama. Birmingham is real weird to me. I always thought like, why are, how do we get sliced up in here? But growing up in the like teenage stuff, there was a lot of really good house shows and like there 
real rowdy stuff. Like they were like, people had a full bar set up and they're selling alcohol. I was like, are you even old enough to be here right now? Y'all got a whole, you're a businessman. Y'all at 21 <laughs> already get it. Like taxing people down here. <laughs> so there's just <laughs> wild house shows and real weird like house venues here. So been lucky in that, in that realm for sure. But nothing, nothing like tearing down all the, the beds for the whole family to have a hoedown or whatever they did. <laughs> yeah. Family reunion. Mm-hmm. I should take that back. I say that, you know, take that back a little bit. They, there are like house style shows throughout Indy. In fact, I've been told they're pretty good, but it, it's more um, commercialized. It's not like just like, hey, come on over, bring a case of beer. We're going to basically have a party sort of style. This is, yeah. more, you know, it's a business form. Uh, yeah, that's kind of how it is here now, too. It seems like that's how the world is. The world's just a lot more professional than it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I like to show up and boaters drunk on the roof. <laughs> I'm like, hey, what's up? We're here. No, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what's your right? Like we were talking about poetry and all that stuff. So what's your writing process like? Do you sit down with a guitar or do you already have some lyrics stashed away on a napkin or or is it, you know? I'd say I'm I'm an eclectic mix of all of that. Um, like I do, I've got like little ramblings of a madman written all over the place, like little notes here and there, just anything you can find around. Because when it comes to you, if you if you really like it, you're like, oh, I got to write that down before I forget it in 30 seconds. So like uh, ramblings of a madman, I've got those everywhere, uh, little notes, lyrics and stuff. But like uh, my writing process doesn't necessarily stick to lyrics first sometimes i'll get like the guitar and come up with something and eventually i'll i'll have a guitar part forever and not have words to it or i'll have words forever and not have a guitar part or i'll have both of them and not even realize that they're like th- that they belong together basically so like sometimes it's a weird process like um i wrote the song mr steel for the jug slammers uh while i was playing fetch with my dog i was just out in the backyard <laughs> playing fetch and like it just came out, I I pulled my phone out and I did like a vo- voice note and almost every word of the song was like already ready to go. The whole theme of it, it was like it had been brewing in my head um, for a while. Um, my l- new song, I actually built it kind of like a hip hop production, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, I'm getting more more into that. Um, I like producing and all that and I like messing around in the studio. So like um, instead of just kind of freestyle and most of my stuff is on a real loose tempo i actually like you know laying down an actual click track and putting all the parts out to a real tempo uh so that'll be like one of the first one of my firsts once that comes out that'll be fun <laughs> yeah. But, uh, there's yeah you know i'm just kind of all over it's real eclectic i don't have i'm not a very professional at all like i don't have any kind of real proper tradition songwriting skills so like i'm sure i'm gluing chords together that don't even live in the circle of fifths together so <laughs> I, I mean yeah you, you know there's so many like so-called rules yeah in the music world and behind the scenes and stuff but man now everything's been done i you're not gonna recreate the wheel necessarily you know what i mean unless a new instrument comes out and you can start you know but yeah, yeah so from there it's just like bending some of them rules and breaking them and changing things up and yeah, coming up bend the rules. a little new and fresh see how fast you can get the wheel going <laughs> yeah. you've had your y'all have had your turn with the wheel let me give her a spin fellas <laughs> yep nothing wrong with that so yeah. uh you named a couple bands what what are some other influences that you have like who do you, who do you really look up to as far as the musician wise uh well yeah the Memphis and that's a big one um in the country realm i like like you know ernest tubb hank williams is a big one uh i feel like being from alabama we got like similar accents and twangs about us so i always try to do a hank williams senior song you know and um uh, i like uh modern wise i like devin champlin you know who he is uh i'm i just actually came across him okay i don't know his stuff very well but i'm i'm gonna dive into it I found it on a playlist. So he used to do something called Gallus Road. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You have to you have to check out some of his stuff. He does some real weird stuff for like the genre, I guess, like switching back and forth between sounds. But he used to do a he used to do a duo called the Gallus Brothers that were a huge influence on like my jug band's stage performance because they did a lot of theatrics. They would actually do a thing where they would play each other's instruments 
like while they juggled. It was real crazy. It was it's nuts. You just have <laughs> to see it. But um they uh they were also in uh uh Croquel Night Owls for a while doing backing for that band, which is one of my favorite modern jug bands. And uh then when he went off doing like more of a country thing, he was doing Sons of Rainier, if you've heard that. Like yeah. that's gonna sound like I'm obsessed with this guy. Um but yeah, Devin Champlin, his solo <laughs> album one of my favorite things that I've heard in quite some time, for sure. He just, he's got, you know, like, here's this really good finger picking, like, folk tune. And then there's, like, this spaced out organ, like, almost space opera type thing right after it. And I'm like, this is cool. I, I need to switch switch up some stuff like that. Like, that's really cool to incorporate that. Really catchy songs, too. So I just like his voice and all that stuff. So, yeah. Uh, huh. I listen to a little bit of everything, though. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's the way to do it. I mean, I listen to pretty much anything, but pop country is the only thing I don't. So yeah, I can't do it. But yeah, I don't. I don't listen to it. But every once in a while, I'll... one pop up in my head that I'm like, "Yep, when I'm older, I'm gonna sell that one to someone." <laughs> About <laughs> barbecues and whatever it is that people do in the suburbs. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not super into modern pop country. That's for sure. I like a lot of the modern, like, you know, like our friends and homies that play country and stuff that are really doing it right. Like, I like uh, Riley Downing, you know. Yeah, here. he's great. All... That's, that's different. I don't, I don't. Okay. Yeah, I like him a lot. I like like that, you know, like all of, all our buddies that are out here, like really doing it proper. Uh, I'm into that, you know. Yeah. I'm, not a, I'm not a Morgan Wallen fan. <laughs> yeah, same here. Not happening. I don't understand how that guy's shattered every record that's out there. I don't get it at all. Pissing, even... pissing people off, man. He's, he did the Trump thing. He He's using the hate platform, man. <laughs> Something. I don't know. But I don't yeah, know. Riley's great. I'd love to have Riley on the show at some point and talk to him. Uh, yeah. Maybe down the line, but I'll reach out to him. Yeah, I'm sure he'd be down. He's he's real good. I'd, I'd like to – I'd watch that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I appreciate your time, man. Is there anything else you want to get out there to the public while I got you on here? No, nah, I'm just hoping some people might come find my music. Uh, I'm just trying to share my stuff with new people. I just, I, I've been doing music my whole life and I don't know how to do anything else. So I got to figure out how to make this work. And hopefully some people will help me do that. Cause it, it, yeah. I, it's, I like to make music for myself, but at the end of the day, if there's no one listening to it, then it's kind of boring. I'd like some folks to hear it. So it'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. So do you have a website too, or are you just on social media or where should people yeah. find you? Uh, Ramblin' Ricky Tate.com. Uh, Ramblin' with no G. Uh, just Ramblin' Ricky, Ramblin Ricky Tate.com. I'm at Ramblin' Ricky Tate on Instagram. Um, I got a TikTok. I don't know how to use it, <laughs> but <laughs> Instagram favorite uh, to use so far. Um, I know how to use that one. Uh, I do my Facebook and stuff. I, I keep up with all the stuff as best as I can. Uh, then, you know, Spotify and all your other streaming platforms. And then uh, actually Bandcamp, Ramblin' Ricky Tate on Bandcamp. I got a bunch of stuff that isn't anywhere else. Like, so early demos, things that, like, aren't even necessarily, like, me alone. Like, older bands. Just anything that's kind of, like, my songs are adjacent. Me singing. I've got a lot of that stuff on there. And, like, my back catalog. So, yeah. Find my music. Watch my videos on YouTube. All that fun stuff. I appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, man. Well, like I said, thank you for being on. I'm a fan. I'll I'll support you, man. And uh, I'll hit you up if I'm in Bama and you do the same if you come to Indiana. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to for sure. I appreciate you having me on. Like, uh, it's it's really good to like to get something like this going. Like, I'm I'm good at booking gigs, but I'm not so good at booking like appearances, if you will. So <laughs> have me. On. Yep. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, man. We'll be in touch. And uh, All right. have a good one. Bye. <laughs>